All right, kids, buckle up. We're going to do a lightning tour, setting up the Onion Omega 2 microcomputer for the first time. Uh, first thing I got to do is plug this in to USB. And this is just for power. So I've already installed the Omega 2 onto its dock, and now I've got to just turn it on. And we should start booting up. <gasps> cool. Since we're working with LEDs, I'm actually going to turn this down a little bit. It's a little hard to see, but this little amber light has come on indicating that we are ready to start going. All right, so first off, we're going to grab the last four digits of this onion's name, and that is 05D7 in this case. So what I'm going to do is connect to the onion's uh, Wi-Fi network, and that's going to get us started. So the default password is 12345678, and I'm going to connect to the network that says Omega, and then my uh, Omega's name. All right, we're ready to go. So now what we need to do is connect to the Omega over my network. Uh, I'm connected to its network, and now I'm going to tell it how to connect to our office Wi-Fi. I do that by logging on to the page that it's serving to my browser. And here we have the setup wizard. Let's get started. The default password and username. Now I get to tell it what our office Wi-Fi is. As soon as it finds a list of networks, I can select it. We actually have a dedicated device network, which is definitely recommended. When you get enough little IoT devices on a single network, then you tend to have problems. There is an Onion Omega Cloud a uh, service that you can connect to from anywhere as long as you have internet access, and that allows you to interact with your Omega from wherever. However, this isn't a mandatory part of the process, so you can skip it until later if you haven't got an account yet. There we go. And the console is what's going to allow me to interact with it very easily over the internet. After it does this and updates itself and installs the console, it's going to reboot itself. So I can just chill for a little bit. Oh, there's a little inductor coil on there. That's pretty cool. Awesome! So now if I reload... Uh-oh. Okay, it's rebooting. Alright. We are in business. Ooh, cool! What should we do? Well, first we're going to log on to the console, so let's do that. There we go. Okay, cool. So, how about this one? Oh, cool. So what I want to do first is plug in an LED and see what happens. Ground over here and connect my little LED to pin number, let's say, 18 over here. Should output, value one. We're gonna put 18 to value one. There it goes, that's pretty fabulous. So we have successfully controlled a GPIO pin using the online console, which I can access when I'm on the same network uh, by going to omega dash and then the four digit code uh, dot local. Uh, I'd like to try it in a different way as well. I can simply SSH into it from my computer's own terminal app. So let's try that. And we're going to work with this fast GPIO module. And I'm still on the same network, so this uh, alias URL should still work. Cool. Let's have a look at what our options are. Now I've got GPIO 18 working. It's already set as an output through the console. Uh, and through all of this pokey pokey in the browser, my LED is still on. So I'm gonna switch to using that, basically using fast GPIO through my terminal app to control the GPIO that opens instead of uh, the online console. So let's do that. Cool, so this shows that we've already got that LED on, and now I'm going to try and turn it off. Perfect! 
Well, that was much easier than I expected. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. We hope to bring you lots more cool projects with the Onion Omega 2 Plus. Uh, another app that you can set up, for example, is the built-in webcam controller, which is going to be really useful for you home monitoring people. Stay tuned.